Hey there Bidwell, Chef Anthony here again and I'm going to show you how to break down a flatfish. All right, here is our flatfish. We have two fluke. They were laying, they could be just like this. These are flatfish. You can tell this by having both eyes, it's hard to see there, but both eyes are on top of the face and on the other side there is no eye at all. Maybe we'll see with the other ones. Both eyes are on top of the face, other side none. And then it's also, as you can tell, a very flat fish compared to our round fish. Uh, with this, that is because these are actually bottom fish. Now they're not bottom feeding fish because what they do is they have their eyes and they look at the fish that are above the sea and they can see both of their, their prey or their predators and that's why they have evolved to have both of their eyes on the top of their head opposed to what we normally see with a round fish on one, so one eye on either side of the head. Uh, with these, there are four fillets, one on either side of the, each side of the fish. So one, two, three, and four. And the first thing we want to do with this fish prior to whenever we receive it is we want to check the freshness of it. So some things that we will do, just like for round fish, we check the gills. We want to have nice red gills, not brown. Um, you can check both sides. You want to check the eyes. The eyes, these ones are actually starting to, to, to fade over. They are not bad, but they are just starting to. So this is definitely a fish that we want to uh, process. And if I was receiving this like this, I would be questioning and definitely checking the, uh, the tongue and the gills and then definitely the, the sniff test to make sure that this is a nice fresh fish. The skin or the flesh is very nice and firm and does spring back. So even though we have some, some fogging of the eyes, I'm not as concerned. And one thing that could cause this is uh, very frequently with flatfish, you'll see that there is no incision here and you can actually feel where the, the guts are in the fish. And flatfish most frequently come with the guts intact inside the fish. Um, now, some people like to use some of the, the guts and intestines as ingredients. I, I do not prefer that personally. However, that is one thing that nice and fresh, those are, those are ingredients you can use, but they will expedite the deterioration of your fish. So this has a shorter shelf life than say a round fish. All right, prior to breaking down our, our beautiful flat fish here, I just wanna talk about the tools that I will use or may need uh, while breaking this down. Um, I like to have all of my tools ready, but I have a flat carver, and this is to remove the skin. I'll demonstrate that. I have a kitchen spoon here. That is if I want to scrape any remaining meat off the bones, I'll probably demonstrate that. I like having, I have two different boning knives here. Uh, this is my preferred one. There's a little bit of flex to it there, being a, a flexible boning knife, uh, but this is a little more rigid. Uh, it depends on what I need to use them for. If I'm trying to cut through bone, I'd go with this. And if I'm trying to uh, remove the fillets, I would go with this one. I always have my honing steel because the sharper your knife is, the easier breaking down fish is going to be. I have tweezers. These I would generally use uh, to remove pin bones, which I won't need to do with these flat fish, but I like having them on hand just in case. And then I have my shears. Uh, that's if I had to cut through bone or if I wanted to remove the, uh, the fins on the fish. I probably will not be using those either. But my last and most important tools I have here is my towel. I love having lots of towels whenever I'm cleaning fish, uh, towels and gloves. Uh, most importantly, because even though the scales on the flatfish are extremely minuscule, uh, you don't want to put those back on the fillet. So every time I do a cut with my knife prior to cutting again, I will go and I will wipe off any scales that are on my knife to make sure that they are completely clean and I'm not having any kind of um, cross-contamination all right, we're gonna break down our flat fish here. And one thing to note prior to this is the different coloration between the top and the bottom where we have our, um, this is due to active camouflage in the wild. They can hide beneath their predators on the ocean floor, see up to see what is coming around them or if they have any prey that's nearby. And if you look down, this blends in with the, the seaweed, the algae, anything that's on the ocean floor. Uh, opposed to the other side, which if you're in a nice big green sea uh, grass, if you were upside down, uh, you would not only be looking at the, the ground, 
but also your predators can see you. So they like to hide like this on the bottom of the ocean. But one thing that is difficult to see on this side, but easier on the bottom, is there is actually a line that runs down, and that is where the center of their spine is on each one of these fish. Uh, it's difficult to see, but pretty easy to feel. Um, so with that, we use that line as where we are to cut each of the fillets from this fish. I go and I feel around for it, and I feel that it's about right here. So I feel at the, the base of the collar, that's where I start feeling the, the flesh goes kind of firm but soft, opposed to the hard cartilage. And that's where I know I want to start my cuts. And my initial cut, I just actually try to break skin opposed to cutting the whole way down to the fish. You'll see that I have some scales on that. That's why I have my, my trusty scale towel there. And after that second cut, this is, that's, those scales are kind of why I don't want to cut the whole way down the first time. I go and I cut down to where the spine is. And I'm going to be quiet to see if you can hear me with the knife. And that's just my knife kind of bouncing off where the, um, the bones are. I don't want to cut through the bones, and I'm going to use them as my guide. That's why I like using this flexible knife, because whenever I take my knife in, I'm going to now turn it flat and I'm gonna to cut towards myself very carefully, but I'm gonna have it flat and I'm gonna kind of put some pressure on it so it bends. Uh, so that I'm using the bones as my guide and I'm getting as absolutely as much usable filet as possible. So I go in to where I've cut and I, once I cut down, I bend my knife and I move it towards the end of the filet very carefully, as you can see. And then I'm also picking up the filet so that I don't accidentally cut through an area that I've already released. And now that I'm at my end here, I'll just cut this kind of free. This is the belly section. And there we have our first fillet removed. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the top. Um, and just being careful because there is a slight bump here. So you can't just go straight across. Um, but once you get on top of that bump and on the other side, then you can do the same thing. Once again, I am lifting and moving the fillet out of the way after I've already cut it as to not cut it a second time and really kind of mince up my meat towards the end there, fold it back over, and I'm gonna feel for where the filet ends. And I'll just cut through the skin there. And at this point, you can even just kind of pull the meat, right, like so. So we have our second beautiful filet, always flesh to flesh and skin to skin. You can see right here where the, the spine is, of where that kind of bump is, and also you can hear the bones that I was talking about but this is a, a, a very clean removal right there. So we're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing with the two fillets on the bottom. Um, these ones, there is a little bit less meat, uh, but it is still there, so you wanna get that or else you're going to be wasting a lot of money on your round fish or your flat fish. Same thing as I'm trying to just cut through the skin here, right along that, that line that goes down the center of the fish. And then with my second cut, I'm looking to go down to the spine. And I'm gonna do that same technique where I cut in where I was and I kind of flip my knife to the side and I just let it run down where the bones are. You can see that I'm never rushed. I'm always taking my time because I want to have as nice as a, of a filet as possible. And now that I'm at the end, I'm just gonna go and I will kind of make my Y cut there. I have my beautiful filet. Once again, skin to skin. 
or flesh to flesh. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And going over that, that bump that I'll demonstrate and then turning my knife nice and flat. ourselves free where the guts are. And we have our other filet. Now you could go and remove the cheeks here, but this one's even smaller than my other fish, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But, I'm gonna try this without. You can see there's no meat left on that bone, on that fish. You just have the, the meat, or the bones there, and then you can probably see that little little hump there that is with the, the spine down the center. So I'm going to get rid of this. And clean off my cutting board and my knife. And then we're going to skin those fillets. So we have our fillet here. And I like to use my carving knife for this in addition to my boning knife. I'm gonna clean up any of this area that was from around the collar or the belly. I'll just cut that clean and that's gonna go into the garbage or into my stock. I feel around if there's any bones. There is actually a slight bone up there. So I'm just gonna kind of cut that as well. That's, that bone's not worth it. And then one thing, these ones are very small, so I will move it closer to my end of the cutting board. That way I can take a step back and make sure that I'm as flat as possible with these ones. But I like to start my knife going one direction, flip it going the other direction. That way I have something here as a handle. And I will just keep my knife flat, do a little bit of kind of micro sawing with that to be as delicate as possible. We have our skin that has no meat left on there. Get rid of that. And then with the fillets, there's these little frill parts. Those are edible, but I don't like having them for my fillet. I don't think they look good. I don't think they add anything to it. So I'll actually peel this off and I'll save that for stock, for smoked fish dip, for other usable things. Heck, maybe take it home to the cat. And we just keep on uh, cleaning. Remember, there's four fillets on each one of uh, these flat fishes. And we do the same thing where, bring it to the edge of my cutting board, keep my knife as flat as possible. And we remove the skin. So again, I'm gonna pull those frills off. Got a nice little fillet there. These ones, they feel like there's a little bit of cartilage in there. I'm just gonna pitch those ones. You feel it and you can evaluate each one. And now we're onto our top that is going to have um, more kind of meat to it. Skin removed, nice fillet. And these frills are a little bit connected more so, come from the bottom so I don't damage my fillet. Those will save, beautiful fillet right there. And last but not least, the last one, you can see there's a little bit there from the belly, so we will Cut that, remove that into our trash pile, and then the same skinning technique as we use. A 
beautiful fillets. Now with this one, this is more of, you know, maybe a, a portion, a dinner portion, maybe a portion and a half uh, where you would need um, three fish uh, or two fish for three people. Um, Cause it, as you can see, it is significantly smaller than our last one or our other one.